On this episode, we're talking about a guy who influenced me on such a huge level. In fact, I think this magician influenced an entire generation of people to dye their hair blonde and spike it up and wear vests and Tenkai Palm, jumbo coins, bar coasters, anything they could get their hands on. I'm talking about Gary Kurtz. Just his cadence, the way he spoke was very uh, calm, but also very specific. And he was kind of like a poet to me, the way he kind of put words together and constructed routines. And when I look back at that stuff now, I feel like Gary Kurtz was actually way ahead of his time. Where time is like a river flowing from the unknown future into the present moment into the backwater cesspool of memory. I think a perfect kind of example of Gary Kurtz's style and his outside of the box kind of thinking when it came to card magic and all magic uh, is present here in the routine you're going to learn on this download. It's called Hypothetical Possibilities and it's Gary Kurtz's take on the ambitious card plot. So instead of just putting the card back into the middle of the deck and having it rise to the top over and over, Gary wove in this kind of crazy time-bending presentation with that. So the spectators at the end kind of almost didn't know if what they just saw really happened or not. And that's why I love it. This is Gary Kurtz, Hypothetical Possibilities. Michelle, I'd like you to choose a card from the pack to represent the unknown future. And so that it remains unknown and never present on our minds, I'm going to place it into the zippered compartment. We'll get back to it in the future. Robert, I'd like you to choose a card to represent the present. Right there, take the card, look at it. Remember, in fact, I want you to sign your name on it. So if you look at it at some future date, you'll be reminded of this, what will then be past event. And place it on top of the pack, because it's not going to stay there long. So it's going to get lost in the shuffle. Now, at this point, I could go ahead and try and find the card, or I could. Well, really, we can't. Let's just say that we could go back to when the card was on top. See, if we could go back to when it was still on top, it would still be on top. Obviously, it's not on top now, right? But if we went back about uh, four seconds in time, it once again be <laughs> on top. Yeah, but we'll go back a little further just after you pick the card, right? I dribble to the card. You said stop. You stopped at this card. Then I handed you the marker. You know why I handed you the marker? That's right, because at that point in time, the card didn't have your name on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll go back to before you. I handed you the marker before you picked the card. Obviously, if it was before you picked the card, I wouldn't be standing here holding it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Look at it. Remember it. <laughs> you didn't, did you? <laughs> you couldn't help pick the same card because time's working in cycles. Anyway, after, after you picked it, I handed you the marker. And after you finished signing your name on it, <laughs> Actually, I could go on like this all day, back and forward in time, but the fact is, none of this is really possible. See, these are all hypothetical possibilities of a nonlinear flow of time. <laughs> no, but there is one thing that is possible. You remember the card you chose to represent the unknown future? Well, it's true. In fact, it's inevitable that the unknown future always, eventually, becomes the present. Mm. Your souvenir.